What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button. You can also join us as a member on Unique Access Entertainment. That button is also right down there. So please hit those up. We appreciate your support and get us this far. And thank you, as always, for joining. Now, today, we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by an icon in the game. Hank Shockley, thank you so much for coming through, sir. Oh, no problem, sir. And thank you very much for having me, man. Yes. So Hank, among many, many hundreds of things, has done a lot of work in the film world. And one of the things that he's done now, he's produced a film, Yay, which is on the film festival circuit. And we're going to be talking about focusing on that today because I saw the film, thought it was pretty interesting. It's written and directed by John Adekache. And, you know, so Hank, first of all, for, as we discussed this film, what drew you to this project uh, in the first place? Well, I met I met John at uh, the Boston Academy of Arts and um, I was I was I was brought there to speak to the class there. It's a, it's a high school for performing artists. And um, he was he te he teaches a film class there and uh, I spoke in his class. And we kind of like hit it off after that. And we just started talking about, because my, my passion is film, um, um, film, television, that kind of stuff, you know? So as far as all my productions, everything that I do is pretty much based off of cinematic vibrations. So I try to, I try to, I try to look at sound and, and stuff that when I'm, when I'm, when I'm producing or when I'm making it. So that's, that's the kind of like the love relationship that we had. So we listened to, we watched a lot of films. We talked about films. We talk about music. John's a big music fan, a big hip hop fan. And um, yeah, so we kind of hit it off from there. Gotcha. Now, yay, as I said, it's in film festivals now and in that circuit. But, you know, when people get to see this and everything, one thing I was interested in is that this is a uh, part of it, at least is an origin story. And uh, for that purpose, how did you guys decide to map it out to be a, a trilogy in this bigger endeavor than just a standalone piece of art? Well, J John is, has, has, when he presented it, you know, to me pretty much gave me the, uh, the, the, the film in its entirety, but it didn't have any, any music to it. it you know, he had just one key, I cut one piece in there, which was, uh, which was supposed to be a temp piece. It was the, uh, the Fele Kute, a uh, track called uh, 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 "Never Sleep." Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, no. <laughs> I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting the title. Now. I want to get the title right. Uh, 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 Trouble Sleep. There we go. My bad. All right. So he, he, John gave me the film and, and it had the, the the title track in there, "Trouble Sleep." And so from that, I thought that 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 to me was the center point of the of the entire film so i i, I kind of like you know wanted to do something that was a, based around that and so so john you know gave me the t total freedom to kind of like just do whatever i saw fit and that's kind of like the way i like to work you know with, with directors like I, I like to be able to work because i i really try to get inside the director's head to find out exactly like where are they going? What are they saying with the film? What are some of the things that they want to communicate? And how can I best illuminate those things without necessarily uh, being redundant? You know, one of the things that I, one of the things that I always think about is, is, is how, is how um, film translate to, to sound. Or, or sound translate to film. Um, so I try to I try to look at things because I think that when when I'm when I'm making music for film, I try to think about how can the how can the music become another element, and not necessarily not necessarily uh, uh, like not not just enhancing the story from the, from a literal standpoint, but how can I add something to it that gives it its own character but at the same time gives you a deeper understanding of the story. 
And that's that's how I try to that's how I I, I try to approach it. So I kind of like went through a lot of different, you know, iterations. And and, lo, you know, lo and behold, when I gave it to John, he loved where it was going because it was actually capturing the the, the Afro surrealism that he was looking to, to accomplish in the film. And so that's that's kind of like how the 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 whole thing kind of like worked itself out. Yeah. And, and you and I both know uh, you more than me, but I always find it amazing when I get to see a film that's in the editing process when it doesn't have any music and then you see it with the sound and the score. Uh, I want you to explain to people how different a film can be when it's just the natural ambient sound, then when you add in the score, then when you add in songs and all this, like how dramatically different a film is when you add all these things to it. Well, keep in mind, like, you know, when you're thinking about a film, it's basically just capturing reality, right? It's no different than you taking a, a, your camera out and you're just filming some some people on the street, for example. It doesn't come, to, it doesn't have any real meaning to me until you start to put sound to it because you can go in many different directions with it. For example, you could take it into a more comical vibration. You could take it into a more dark and serious, or you could take it into something that's happy and, and, and refreshing. So it's, it, it, the sound to me is the heartbeat of, of filmmaking. And it, and, and it, and it really, it, it's the story behind the story. And so the idea is to take the sound and, and the director's vision, because everyone has a, their own vision when they're, when they're creating their, their film. They, they, they already have a score in their mind, so to speak. Of what of of the pacing that needs to be there. So now the question is: Is can I match his vision, and then even surpass what he even thought that his vision would be? That's that that's where the the, the hard part comes in, and the trick to it. And and once you and being like I said before, being a film buff helps me a lot because I watch a lot of films. I I take down notes sometime. And and then I try to I try to understand what the music is doing and how it's telling how it's helping to tell that story. Yeah, and I think you do a great job of that throughout. Yay! And one of the things that intrigued me was that particularly in the first part of the film, there's not as much uh, it's not as drum or percussion driven, which of course is a hallmark of not only rap period but especially your work with public public enemy specifically so how did you decide to go that route sonically for parts of yay well it it's it kind of like has the same kind of backdrop that that a pe record would have in terms of textures uh but but like you said it does doesn't have drums because the idea is in filmmaking the idea is for you to be invisible the whole the 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 dialogue is the star, and so it's so it's a different way of working as opposed to when you're working with music where you're trying to you're trying to make the rhythm the star, and then the and then the the artist that gets on top of it adds adds heightens heightens that 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 elevation, but so so for me, it's more about how can I dig inside the character's head, how can I illuminate what they're thinking about when they're when they're saying their 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 pieces and how do i illuminate that in a way that becomes subtle but 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 intense and heartfelt and that's the that to me is it was the idea and keeping in mind that since trouble sleep is the centerpiece of it I have to I I I I I have to I want to stay I want to create a, a mixture of what I consider to be organic sounds and uh and electronic sounds and trying to create a marriage between the two. Okay. And with with uh, aesthetically storyline wise and everything there's uh we got Nigeria, we got Haiti, we got Boston how how and why did these things appeal to John to want to put into the film in the way that he you guys did? Well, John, I, you know, from what I gathered that he wanted to do was he wanted to make something that connects, you know, the United States with Africa as well as as Haiti. 
And so, so he wanted to create that triangle to let you know that the Pan African, the Pan, the Pan African vibration is is not just about Nigeria. It's not just about the United States or Haiti. It's a, it's the combination of those, and that's something that 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 I think that he did very well in terms of bringing that together. Because keep in mind that his vision is more about take globalizing the 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 vibration of pan-africanism and and its connections yeah absolutely i think yeah he does a a a great job of that and i think the performances are good uh, when people get to see it i'm excited for that so with the the drama of it in one of the more pivotal scenes toward the end of the film the the music does provide a dramatic shift so as a film buff and as somebody that's worked on on juice american gangster these other things how do you have a deft touch or a heavy-handed touch how do you uh, decide how much pressure to apply sonically uh for that atmosphere yeah that's a that's a very good question uh a lot of it you know i i listen to the the rough and i and i and i i listen to the stuff in the rough that that eventually you would he they cut away because a lot of the stuff is background noise but that background noise is the is the is the is the the seed for me it's the it's the it's the embryo of what creates that process because for me if the sound doesn't how I say if it doesn't germinate itself inside the film then to me it becomes a, a almost like a paste on it, it becomes this thing that you just put on top of it as opposed to it being a part of it so i want to make that that's where the organic approach comes from is i i i look i listen to the background noise i listen to the 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 the, the, the leaves or the or the trees in the background i want to see here how the wind is 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 vibrating and then the then the scoring to me is based off of those elements and then and then if you want to heighten everything else you just you know you you pretty much know what to do to add more suspense more thrill or 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 a heightened level of 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 heightened level of 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 enjoyment right okay gotcha now with that too how i guess did you guys decide to film in the boston area based on john being there yeah, I, a lot of it was based off of John's being there because he knows the area, and and you know when you're doing independent film, it's all about how you can get favors done, you know, and 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 he since he has he's embedded into the film community there, he he's been able to get this film across, and and the film is beautifully beautifully shot, you know, um, we we had uh, screenings, uh, we just had our first screening in Boston. And in the and the uh, the the uh, Atmos Theater at at the AMC Theater out there, and um, on the big screen it looks and sounds amazing, and so and that's the that was to me the the I think the the idea that he was going for. I don't I'm not trying I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think that that was that was the aesthetic that he wanted to make sure that he had full control of. He wanted to make sure that he can shoot this correctly the way he know it with his crew without having to spend too much you know spend too much money moving people around yeah that's a important part of filmmaking like the music business it is a business you gotta uh be mindful of all those things to bring the project to life so that's true yeah so and a lot of i'm sorry i was just going to add to that a lot of people don't understand that when you're when you're like just like when you're making a record the idea is to, is to make it for as, as as cost efficient as possible and so that's that's and in filmmaking your cost can exceed so f- go fa- so fast into into you you'll, you'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in a blink of an eye you know so you have to really be be really you know frugal on how you manage that and and so that's you know so so starting out in Boston allows allowed John to be able to take advantage of a lot of the people that he worked with before and and know and that saves time and money. Yeah, absolutely. 
and, and tied into that too with the natural sound and that natural ambiance of the the settings in yay there's also in my opinion a lot of very powerful dialogue especially uh by the main character played by the core stellar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i wanted to know from you too beyond the action side of things how does dialogue affect things as far as you know the mood or the enhancement that you're going to provide mm -hmm. sonically well that's 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 a great question and, and the reason why i i did i did it is i use stella as the uh as to me as my muse i i want to get inside her head and her emotions and what she feels you know keep it keep in mind that you know it was a tragedy that happened to her and 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 now she's 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 on a search you know to 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 fill that 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 hole that's inside her heart so now my mission was pretty much well how do i bring her emotions to life so that she not only that 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 she come that she has a, a, a she did a great performance but how do i make that performance connect to the people and make and make her expressions and and her and 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 all her emotions transcend and that's the that to me is where where you know where the where the a lot of the give and take goes in because you you want to be able to capture the moments when she's feeling a little like relaxed a little a little and, and sometimes she feels a little a little you know sarcastic sometimes she feels a little uh, a little anger comes in but then it goes it goes back until then she's then she's calmed down and she's and she's trying to be uh it's trying to be a decent person a good person but she's still harboring all of these energies this deep of heart these deep emotions that's inside of her and 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 how do you how do you convey all of that that's the that to me is is the trick where you have to you have to constantly go back and forth and make sure that that every expression every moment that she has that it, it 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 you can illuminate that without necessarily giving away any of the punchlines that's coming up yeah that's that's a delicate balance be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by soren baker he's official history of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with ice t snoop dogg mc ren the doc and dozens of others the history of gangster rap a definitive look at how los angeles changed rap forever in los angeles the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV back for that WA? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.